Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Print It here. In today's video, I'll be talking a little bit about dates and templates in Django. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one app that I created a while ago because I didn't want to create a separate app just for this. So what I'll be doing is I'll demonstrate the date here at the top. So just to show you what I have so far, in addition to the other code for the to-do list, I have this date here in this my date variable. And then inside of views, I simply have date time now as my date. So pretty simple stuff. What I want to show you though, is how you can modify the date. So different things display depending on what your needs are. So what I have right now is the default. So just my date and it shows the date. So Django is picking up that this is in fact a date time object and it's formatting the date in a particular way. This way actually depends on the location and language being used. So I'm in the United States and I speak English. So this is what the date looks like just by changing the settings here. So if I change this to Spanish in Spain, then we'll see that by default, things are a little different. So I'll come back to this, but just for now, I just want you to know that by default, Django kind of formats your date in a particular way, depending on your location. So let me change this back to English in the US, and I will show you the date filter. So the date filter is simply adding the pipe and then the word date, and that activates the date filter. So when I do that, I get just February 3rd, 2018. Now remember when I had my date by itself, it had the date and the time because this is a date time object. If I had just a date object, then the time wouldn't show obviously, but the object is a date time object, so the time is there. But when I use the date filter, I chop off the time. And with the date filter, I can change how this looks by using some of the options. So I have the Django docs open just to show you the options and I'll post a link to the options in the description below. But as you can see here, there are several things you can do. You can format the month in a particular way or the, the days of the month in a particular way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna play with a little of these. So let's find one. Um, let's try month abbreviation in associated press style. I've never heard of that, but to use that, what I'll do is I will simply add a colon and then double quotes with the option that I want. So in is the option that I just read. So when I refresh my to do app, I just get F E B period for February. So if I do something similar with something else, let's say, what's a good one for the month? Month lowercase, so lowercase b. You can just add that in there. Refresh. And I get the month in lowercase letters. Now, I don't have to just use one thing. I can also add in other parts of it. So for example, if I wanted to add in the day of the week, I can use uppercase D. And what this means is the first character is going to be evaluated, which is lowercase B. So that's the month in lowercase, followed by a space, and then the day of week. So I refresh that, and I see lowercase February and then sat. So it's pretty much doing exactly what the documentation says. So you can combine these in any way that you want. So if I want the long month F, I can throw that on the end there. Refresh, and then I get Feb, Sat, and then February. So whatever combination of these options you want, you can have. Obviously this one here doesn't make any sense, but if you wanted something like, let's say, the slashes format. So I would find where the month is in slashes. So one to 12 uh, in, so I'll just add in in there. So in is the month. So in this particular case it's going to be two. And then I'll throw a slash in there. And then what I want is I want the day. So once again, I'll just look for where the day is 
and I'm looking for day of the month, so lowercase d. So it gives me the month digit slash and then the day digit or digits. So I get two slash O3. And note that the formatting is different just depending on exactly which one I use. If I use another one without the the leading zero, then it will look a little different. But if you just read the documentation, it will tell you exactly what you're going to get. And of course you can try different things. So the last one I want is I want the year. So I can use O and that will give me the year numbers. So I'll just do another slash O and then I'll refresh and I get two slash O three slash 2018. So it's taking the same date time object and it's converting it to whatever format that I want. And I can actually do the same thing for time. So if I just go back up here so I can get back to the time filter, let me look at it. The time works in exactly the same way. Except you have fewer options, of course, because with time you have just a fewer ways to format it. But by using the example here, I can do something like this. Add another one, my date, and then time, and then hour, and then what do we have here as the example? I. And refresh. And it gives me the time formatted in a particular way. So leading zero, so it's 3.31 in the morning. It's not actually when I'm recording this video, it's just I didn't set my time zone. But in the particular time zone that my app is in, it is 3.31 in the morning. So date works in the same way. And the last thing I want to show you is the shortcut ones. So I'll go back to the list here for dates. And there are four formats that I can look at. So there's date format, which is the default. So if I change this to date underscore format, we'll see that it appears as what I had originally. So that is the default. And if I change it to something like short date format, we see that it will change. So O2, 03, 2018. Let me remove the time just so you don't get confused. But just know that time works in the same way. So I don't want to cover time because it's pretty much the exact same process. It's just different options. And then if I were to change my language code again, so Spain again, I can't think of any other language codes. That's why I'm using Spain and Spanish. But if I change that, then I see that the format changes. So in Spain, the day comes first followed by the month and then the year. Whereas in the United States, it's the month first, then the day, and then the year. So if you if you haven't seen something like that, like if you live in the United States and you read a date from a different country, you may think it's a certain date when it's really a different date. So that can be a little confusing in the early months. It, it's a little more clear as you get later in the year. Like in December, it's a little harder to confuse, but definitely in the earlier months, uh, it can be something that you can confuse. So like you can think it's March 3rd, or that's not a good example. You can think it's March 9th uh, when it's really September 3rd. So that's just one of the things you have to look out for. But, you know, depending on what language you use in your app by default, you can see that the date changes. So that's really all I wanted to talk about in this video, just uh, some simple stuff using the date filter because it can come in handy when you're using your app because you know a lot of apps are gonna have dates in them for whatever reason. So if you want to format that date in a particular way, now you know how to do it and you know where to look to find out how to get the exact date that you want. I recommend trying out the predefined ones first to see if any of those work for you. If they don't work, then you should go and uh, build the format yourself and it's pretty easy. Uh, just build whatever you want the date to look like. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions about using the date filter in Django templates or the time filter, then you can just leave a comment down below and I'll answer it. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching this video and I will talk to you next time.